Welcome to Greater Love Assembly's After Church Reflections with our Pastor Larry Fisher and I am Mary Muhammad. Today we are continuing our series on being in the will of God and we are going to be speaking about what Pastor was talking about today. So, Pastor Fisher, yes. I just want to say um, before we begin that um, I was very touched by the word today. It really touched me in ways that um, I haven't experienced in a long time. And it seems like every time you give a message, I, I, I'll be like, this was, this was the best one. And then the next one is greater and greater and greater. And that just goes to the credit of God and his word that he always says something greater for us yes. to, um, to dwell on. And so one of the questions I have for you, one of the things that um, really um, stuck out to me was the question that you ask yourself um, every day. Um, am I in your will today? Was I in your will today, God? That could be the end of your day or that could be the beginning of your day. And I just want you to expound on um, what that's like when you ask that question. What, how do you feel when you answer it or he answers it? Well, I'll tell you, um, it's, it's, a, it's real personal. And I, I, I won't say that... Um, I arrived at that place um, just um, by accident, but really because you know I've been having this conversation of this intimate um, uh, episode with God, where He's just been speaking to me, and it's just something about being in the presence of God that it will cause you to begin to examine yourself and things that you really don't know. Um, uh, things that you might not really be thinking about when you're in his presence it's like those things come to mind and so being in the presence of a holy God you begin to ask yourself God you know you're holy and and I and I sense you and I feel you and, uh, and things just start coming back to you and and so for me it's been um, um, conducive with this series that we've been on God's will and I just begin to ask myself God am I in your will I am I in your will because it's important to me to know that I'm in his will because that's what pleases him and, and it's what honors him and it's what allows him to continue the work that he's doing in me. Yes, yes. Um, as a, a teacher, we were taught to, um, to reflect on our day as we, after teaching, to see what we did good, what we could do better. And I, I want to incorporate that in a journal. Yeah. Every, at the end of every day, God, was I in your will today? Mm. Make that's, that one of the questions that, that's good. I, that I ask myself. So thank you for that. Yes. Um, another thing um, that really touched me um, when you talked about the hedge and um, being in God's will makes you um, the hedge of protection for your family. That really, that really struck me because you know you think about it, but you don't think about that responsibility that you have. Um, as the hedge of protection for your family when things happen and things go wrong. Can you um, expound on that? Yeah, I believe that um, those of us that, um, that have um, position or position in family, uh, even in, 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 in the workplace, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. If we find ourselves in the will of God, there's a level of protection. There's a level uh, of God's presence. And when God, you know, when God's presence is, is available to us, everything that God is and everything that God says, is, we have access to. And we might not always know what it is that uh, we need protection from, but being in His will uh, answers and speaks to all of those things. And um, so uh, I believe that uh, if we make it our business to be in the will of God, that please God, that God will use us and, and, and uh, as a shield against things that can come against uh, those that are around us, those that we are responsible for. So I, I do think that there, uh, there, there's um, some credibility to that. Yes, that's, that's a great responsibility. You, you know, remember today in the message, we, we, we went over the scripture where uh, Satan said to, um, to God, um, you have, you're protecting Job. You, you put a hedge around him and his family. But it all was predicated on the position that Job had with God. And so his family was protected. Um, but obviously we know that God's 
allow um, for that uh, issues to take place in Job's life. But prior to that, Satan could not touch his, his family. Yeah. And when you think about that, what a huge responsibility it kind of it really makes you um, recognize what what that you need to do more as an individual. Yes. I'm speaking about myself. You know, that's a great responsibility that I have. You know, on my family, and I consider myself the hedge for my family. And yeah. when you said that, it just it did something to me. Like, oh my God, I gotta do better. I gotta mm -hmm. be more yes. in the will of God because I have all these make up responsibilities. The hedge. Yes. yes, make up the hedge. Yes, That's correct. Okay, and um, um, yielding. I mean, that in itself is just so deep. Just constantly being in the will of God and yielding your will to his will and I, you know I just want to ask the question like basically I just want to say how do you how do you do that how do you how are you constantly in the will of God mm, it's, it's um, by training ourselves it's not something that we can do um, like we turn on a switch and turn off a switch and it's not something we flow in all the time it's effort it's effort and um, we have to um, acknowledge where we are what's going on around us and what role do we play in it and what would God say and what does God want us to do what is godly character in this situation um, and then we have to we have to we have to uh, make ourselves at times we have to force ourselves sometimes to do it and uh, we want to force ourselves with, with the right intention now. We're not forcing ourselves to do it just because we say we can say we did it, but we're forcing ourselves to do it because we want to please God on every at, at every at all costs. And sometimes we have to fight against the flesh. Remember the Bible says that the flesh warreth with the flesh and the flesh with the spirit. Um, and so there's a battle. And we have to make up on our minds. We have to cast down uh, vain imaginations to remain in God's will. The good thing about it is that in order to remain in God's will, we have his word because his word teaches us what the will of God is. And it even teaches us how to be in it. And then the power of the Holy Spirit comes to help us to enforce, to enforce it. Yes, nothing like the word. When, that, when, when you're in doubt and those scriptures come back to you, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it edifies and it strengthens you. Yeah. So if you're in the word and, it, and it, those scriptures become a part of your everyday life, it helps you to yield. Like, I know my father would not be pleased with what I just said and what I just yeah. did. So let me just, you know, repent right now and yeah. say I'm sorry. So, yes, yes. yes you know, and, and the Bible even tells us that we're to yield our members. In other words, our body. Yes. We're to yield our members. In other words, uh, yield our body to, to God. You know, um, one scripture says that we're to, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yes. That's a yielding. Yes. Present your bodies a living sacrifice yes. unto God, which is your reasonable service. So yielding is, is, um, uh, 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 is, is a normal. It's a normal practice for, for believers. But it, it doesn't happen overnight. And I, I just want to say this too, um, one way to, to allow your body to submit to the will of God is through fasting yes. and the consecration. When you deny yourself, mm -hmm. you, you're telling your body, no, you can't have that, yes. no, you can't, you can't do that. And that's a way to help you to yes. teach your body to yield to what you, because we are in charge of the mm -hmm. body. Sometimes we let our body mm -hmm. do what it want to do, but really our minds mm -hmm. are what control the body so we have to tell our body sometimes we got to tell it no yes. you can't have that yes. you can't do that yes. so yes. and it's funny you said that because one of the things is when you fast your mind I mean your spirit lets you know how gracious it is that you fasted because I've shared this testimony on, on the past is where my wife and I would be on a fast for three days and when the third day came, we didn't want to get off the fast Amen. because we were feeling so good and so close to God and yes. so sensitive. And it was our spirit, really, that was saying, that was pleased and, and yes. wanted to, to stay there. It wasn't the yes. physical. Yes. We, had, we had crucified the physical, so it, was, it had no say. It was our spirit that was like, don't come off yet. Don't come off yet because we were feeling so, so beautiful. much in the closeness of God. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I like that testimony. I'm going to keep that in mind. And I just have one more. Sure. Um, 
Well, the, the last thing I wanted to speak about was the uh, permissive will of God, mm -hmm. what God will allow to happen in your life, and how you talked about how he allows things to happen in your life that you might not like to, in order to build your character mm -hmm. and, to, and to make you a better person. So yeah. I would like you to expound on wow. that. Wow. Yeah, God is big on character. And everything that Christ was, God wants us to emulate that. And Christ was, had great character. Um, when it came to his responsibilities, it came to accountability, um, you know, he made God first. And it was all about his Father. And so God wants the same thing uh, for us, but just like Christ was persecuted. Now what Christ was doing, when he was persecuted, what he was doing, he was perfecting character. And the way he perfected it is that he never got out of character. He never went against the will of God. So that is what God is trying to instill in us. So just like Jesus went through his persecution, God, which was God's permissive will for him. Remember, he gave, he spared not his son, but he gave him up for us. Meaning he was going to come in to a situation where he was going to be persecuted. Well, we're going to sometimes uh, be um, the ones that God will um allow the, to go through those things in order that he can instill that same character in us and the thing about it it's doable because because christ did it so if christ had to go through persecutions or god's permissive will in order to establish and perfect um character god will use the same process to 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 uh to perfect character in us character always comes with conflict yes yes so just to sum up everything the, the purpose of us being in the will of God is so, and so that we can be built up to be more Christ-like. God wants us all to use Christ as our example. He wants us all to be Christ-like. And so that's what the message that I got from you today. Amen. So I thank you so much, Pastor Fisher. Amen. Thank Amen. you.